Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Okay. So, this is the first lecture on trigonometry and spherical trigonometry in uh, Indian uh, works. So, this is the outline. So, where I will first deal with the crucial role of trigonometry in astronomy problems, then uh, Indian sines, cosines that is Bhujajya and Kotijya and sign tables, some interpolation formula which are needed for finding the sine and cosine at an arbitrary angle then determination of the exact values of the 24 hour signs and Bhaskara's some aspects of Bhaskara Jodhpati will be discussed in this lecture and the rest later. There is inevitably there will be some overlap between this lecture and the previous lecture. Okay. Now, the ancients had observed regularity in the motion of celestial bodies. So, by celestial bodies I mean stars, sun, moon and planets in the sky. And actually in the very olden days when um, things were uncertain, far more uncertain and uh, life was more difficult, in fact this is the only regular thing which they would have seen, you know one of the most regular things would have been the motion of sun and uh, moon. And to a little uh, far lesser extent uh, the planets. The stars themselves have an extremely regular motion. That is what I am trying to say is the following. So, you observe the motion of celestial bodies in the sky, okay. Celest the so called celestial sphere, you see what you see. And we see that the objects, all objects will rise in the eastern portion of the sky. So, then rise up, go to the top and then come down, okay. And all of them, it will be seen that they will be moving parallel to what is known as a celestial equator, which is parallel to the or terrestrial equator itself. So, all the objects will be moving from eastern portion of the sky, rise and go up and then come down. Okay. That is what we see, everybody would have seen that. So, now <coughs> this is the daily motion, okay. but apart from the one what one has to see is the relative motion. If you see the stars, okay. if you see the stars, if you observe the motion of stars, the relative positions of stars will be always fixed, relative portions of the stars will be fixed completely. Of course, now modern astronomy say that that also has a little bit of motion, but we ignore that the relative positions of stars in the sky will be fixed. Of course, they are moving, but the relative positions are fixed. Okay. But whereas, sun, moon and other objects seem to be moving in the background of stars, in the background of stars, in the sky. Suppose you, you know, <coughs> uh, trace a path, they will be moving in the background of the stars. And that will be from west to east, so eastward motion. So, that is what, you know, is I am considering as the motion of uh, these objects. Okay. Stars are extremely regular in the sense that you know if you see some star in the top portion of the sky at the night, some well, let us say 12 o'clock in the night. So, next day it will be exactly in the same position about 4 minutes earlier. Similarly, the, the second next day it will be about you know same position about 8 minutes earlier and so on you see. And always it will complete one in the circle uh, in this, uh, this thing sky. I mean if you observe the positions at some uh, fixed time in the night and then again you know this. So, that is regularity no question extreme regularity will be there. And that period is as you know it is slightly 4 minutes less than the day. So, 23 hours 56 minutes that is called a sidereal day or the nakshatrika dina. The sun, moon and all that will be moving in the background of the stars. Okay. So, those that motion will be not so regular, not completely and departures from complete regularity have been observed over millennia, okay. not centuries, millennia, okay, thousands of years. Ancient, by ancients I mean not only in India, 
Babylonians, Egyptians, okay, Greeks, so many series of Chinese, all of them have you know observed this at whatever level and and whatever level of sophistication. Of course, earlier there was not not much of mathematical formulation. Only about uh, for the past two thousand or two thousand five hundred years we have some mathematical formulation. Okay. So now ancient considered sun and moon also as planets. Okay, whatever is moving, it's moving around the earth. From the earth you are seeing, so they also are moving. So they are uh, considered as planets. And uh, what was seen was that over that's why I said millennia. You know, for a long after long, I mean, the observations over a very long periods, they found that the motion is not so uniform. With different you know, varying degrees of you know non-uniformity. For instance, sun itself is fairly uh, uh, uniform, which which was some small departure from uniformity. Okay, so that is if sun that we we also you know in Indian terminology we say you know which zodiacal sign it occupies. You see, Mesh Rashi, Vrushabh Rashi, or some that is zodiacal sign. Okay, so it will complete one revolution. First they thought it was three sixty. Days, okay. It will complete. It will take 360 days. Then more accurate observations told them that it is 365 days, and some 366. Then more accurate things, you know, even even 3000, 4000 years back, it was known that it is not 365, but 365 and a quarter. See, so that is the thing. And of course, later, some a few thousand years more, in, they will, they found it that also is not accurate, but slightly less than 265, 365.25. Okay, so even in that, it is not fully uniform, but slight departure for uniformity is there, but that is small. For moon, it is even somewhat more irregular. Okay, if you see the relative motion of the sun and the moon, okay, so that is suppose this you know um, from let's say new moon day is when sun and moon are in conjunction. So you take the observation from one new moon day to another. That is called a month. So that is the masa. Of the month, okay, so that the average is about twenty nine and a half days, twenty nine point five three zero nine days, but that varies. Sometimes the motion may be the month may be just twenty eight days, and sometimes it may be thirty kind of a thing. So there is a variation of about two and a half. So that is because moon's motion is not that uniform. The more far more less uniform than suns. Okay, now planets. They don't, you know, you know, have such an important role in various, you know, religious activities and all that. Also, they are not so conspicuous. But even then, planets also they could see the regularities, but it is of a different nature, you know. In fact, it is very difficult to see a pattern if you just observe, you know, start observing, okay, sun, moon, and all that. Suppose a person has, a, you know, very good, extremely intelligent mind, and he is very meticulous observation. He can find a pattern between sun and moon, you know. Their motion, planetary motion, uh, their uh, rate of motion, and so on. But for uh, planets, it will be very difficult to guess. You know what is the kind of a thing. We know the reason now. You know that they move around the sun, whereas we are observing around the earth. But anyway, still they could <coughs> make out that you know that there was some kind of a regularity in the this thing, uh, motion, and there was non-uniformity. So this non-uniform motion of planets, you see, that is at the crux of uh, you know. Lot of developments in astronomy. Okay, non-uniform. You see how they handle the non-uniform. You see, and astronomy was the exact science in the earlier times. You see, before 15th century. So astronomy played the same role as physics in the recent times. You know, physics is some kind of a you know central science. You see, around which most fundamental of the science, around which other things are built. So astronomy had a similar role earlier. <coughs> okay, and then. <coughs> To explain this new this thing, uh, new non-uniform motion, trigonometry is required. That's what I am giving this background. So trigonometry is needed to explain the non-uniform motion of planets. So this was the historical context for developing trigonometry, both in Indian and Greek astronomy. Okay. Now we know. I mean, of course, even a school boy, a school girl will know that the planets move in elliptical orbits around the sun. And moves in a moon moves in an elliptical or orbit around the Earth, and in a geocentric framework, one can say that the Sun moves in an elliptical orbit around the Earth. You see, those those orbits you don't observe. What you see is you know variations you know 
it is in the background of stars okay and you have to construct the picture after observation over so many these things so behind the simple sentence you know that it moves in elliptical orbit that is the extreme hard work over millennia now the ellipsic ellipticity will mean that there is some kind of a you know eccentricity it is a departure from circularity and that will lead to non uniform motion so how was this taken into account in ancient astronomy we have to see that so one had an epic so called epicycle model for the motion of a planet both in indian and greek astronomy the details are different but the basic idea is as follows okay so essentially suppose you assume that you know to the first approximation the planet is moving uniformly around the earth okay in the background of stars okay so p0 is the so called mean planet or the madhyama graha okay so this is moving at a uniform rate in a circle called kaksha vrutta called different now this gamma this is a reference line is the direction of the first point of mesh rashi according to indian normally in according to indian convention you would have, all, of, all of you would have heard of mesh avrusha band all that so that is a division of the zodiac 127th part of this thing the beginning point of that is the uh, this uh, mesh adi they say mesh rashi so now with respect to that you measure this angle okay incidentally only you observe the angles only you all may, may, may distance measurements came out later you see when you see some object you see essentially the angle with respect to certain directions so this theta 0 that's called the mean planet okay which is moving uniformly okay so now to take into account the non uniformity you you know you draw a circle of radius small r around p0 okay so around this mean planet you draw a sort of small circle so this is called the epicycle or mandavruta so this is the epicycle okay and this has a radius r and there is what is known as an apogee or we are called mandocha in indian terminology so this <coughs> sorry the direction of apogee and how we get it that is a different matter you see that have we have to discuss but just assume you know that there is some kind of apogee and there is a direction associated with it now draw a line parallel to this direction of apogee and let it hit the circle at capital p so this is the true position of the planet okay so you got the point this is p0 is the mean planet called madhyama graha and p is the true planet called as sputak graha okay so now you have to find this so difference between them is you know p0 op that is the difference between the madhyama graha and sputak graha or the correction you have to apply to the mean planet to get the true planet okay so p this is and that is where one can two longitude is this theta 0 minus delta theta i am calling this as delta theta the small you know correction okay and from the geometry okay you can refer to it later so you draw a perpendicular from p to the line extended from op0 onwards this p q o is 90 degrees i mean it may not look like this in the figure but it is that and then simple geometry will tell you that you know one can show that this this delta suppose this is k op is k this is delta theta so then one can show that this delta theta is sin inverse or sin delta theta or k sin delta theta is equal to r sin m m is so called manda kendra so which is this angle angle between the madhyama graha or mean planet and the apogee so your delta theta the correction will be sin inverse r by k sin theta 0 minus a where a is the angle corresponding to the apogee okay i mean this of course you can look at it at leisure sometime what i am trying to say is that this so to know the correction delta theta one needs the sin function that is the important thing you see details you don't bother now so to know the correction you know you have to know the sin function you should know how to find the inverse sin function also sin inverse is there so that is to find the arc from the sin so this is how the trigonometric function center astronomy so thus to find delta theta for any theta zero on you a we should know sin theta zero minus a sin m either by explicit construction or tabulated value okay so this is how it comes there so i mean 
So um, more many of the developments in astronomy like this are intimately in, um, in mathematics in the earlier days are intimately associated with developments in astronomy. So non-uniform motion, you are you know you have to know science and all that. You have to develop a trigonometry. I mean, even to describe the circle and all that, you see, why do you say 360 degrees? Because earlier it was thought that the average year is about 360 days. So that's how you know. So no, it's not surprising that you know all the important works in uh, important ideas in mathematics in the earlier days in India, or from Aryabhatta onwards. So they were always in astronomy text. You see, mathematics was a part of the astronomy text and later only Ganita Sara Sangra onwards you will have independent treatises on uh, mathematics. I mean that is so even in the other uh, western countries also I mean the greco European tradition also. So they were intimately related and many important developments in mathematics always occurred in relation to astronomy problems like instantaneous velocity of moon, Tatkalika Gati which was mentioned earlier. So that is you know what is needed in this thing and that is the instantaneous velocity intimately related to the development of calculus. Okay. But we are you know bothering only about trigonometry here. So similarly to find the time from the shadow of a gnomon. Okay. Suppose this is some shanku you know pillar whose shadow we are observing and this is the this is the vertical direction and uh, suppose the sun's rays are coming at an angle z. So then you can easily see that this shadow s is g tan z sin z by cos z. So clearly this is a, is trigonometric functions are coming. So this is a shadow and then to find that shadow of time from shadows that also was mentioned one has to use so called spherical trigonometry which I will um, discuss uh, later. So actually this is the uh, formula which is relating the shadow I mean uh, this uh, angle z and the time h essentially h is related to the time okay it is called hour angle. So you can see that they are all related. So you can find out h from z if you know phi and delta also phi is the latitude of the place delta is the so called declination. So determination of sine and cosine, cosine functions very critical to you know for time related things also daily motion. Okay. So as important a thing as time. So, hence the trigonometry, you know, critical criticality of trigonometry for astronomical calculations. So, now we will discuss Indian Jaya. Of course, some of them have been done earlier, but let me repeat it for <coughs> completeness. So, this here you have a circle, okay, with the radius capital R, okay, and then this is your angle theta, and AB is the perpendicular like this. Okay. So, then AB is called a jaw. Okay. The radius R is taken to be 21600 minutes divided by 2 pi that is nearly 3438. You have already come across this. So, essentially you are taking the length of the circumference to be 21600 which is the number of minutes in a circle 360 into 60. The radius of that circle is jaw you know trijya which is <coughs> um, uh, nearly 348. So, this is a trijya. Okay. So, then this r sin theta that is a ja, Indian ja is r sin theta. So, it is a length in the, that is the length okay. and uh, this O B is called a cotija or kojya and uh, this B D is r into 1 minus cos is called utkrama jya or shara and uh, this also has been discussed. Okay. So, this is how it is. Of course, earlier it was called this. Uh, uh, I will come to that. Yeah. So, now the Greeks worked with cards and Indians with R signs. Okay. Suppose this is a relation. See, suppose you have a circle like this. Okay. So, this is the angle theta. So, A B is the Indian sign or sign theta, whereas card, so this is does not you know touch the circle, right? It is only half of this card is A B and card is A C, right? So, A C is card of the angle 2 theta, which is 2 A B which is 2 r sin theta. Okay. So, Greeks work mainly with the cards and Indians with the signs you know all in fact more exclusively with signs after Aryabhata. Okay. And of course, earlier India also this, this used to be called Jya and then A B was called Jardha. 
okay but later that was given up and this itself called was called ja okay now the important thing is the indian sign is perfectly suited for writing formulae and performing calculations if you actually want to go through the i wrote that figure you know you have to calculate the correction and all that it is always the sign function which comes okay so <coughs> the sign function so then if you know the formula and you can write it easily in terms of the signs not with cards so in always in indian text there will be some formula you know for uh, give, give, give calculating the positions of planets sun moon and uh, planets okay it will all can be summarized you know with some parameters and all that you know with some two pages you can summarize all the calculations okay and of course they will tell how to ca compute sign and all that there is a different matter whereas in the greek this thing if you go to some work by ptolemy it is difficult to find out how to calculate so you will take you know you take this chord and then you, know, you go to the table and then find out this and so on and so forth i mean it is not is as accurate as the indian thing i am not denying that but it is more difficult for computation and indians always you know enthusiastic about computation you should have a quick picture of this thing okay so this is the full theory the philosophical and all that that can wait a little so because for this computational purposes this is most eminently suited and ideal actually okay so this is the indian sign and the actually the very term sin cosine can be traced to india the ja was also called jiva jiva okay and this was adopted by the arabs and when it went to arabs around 6 7 century jiva the jiba also it became in arabic is read as jaib okay so jiba didn't mean anything jaib means some pocket or fold in arabic so they started using jaib okay which means pocket or fold and it translated into latin it is sinus okay this meaning you know this got translated into latin uh, then it became sinus and from sinus you became sign okay so jiva to sign so they sound different so the term sign is derived from indian jiva so then indian the in india the complement of the ja is kotija okay so that is we have already seen that you know the complement of that you see so this is ab so if o ab is sin ob is cosine right so there is a there is actually sin of 90 minus theta it can be viewed like that also so they always use cotija or cotija short in short so some complement of sin is cosine so the sin and cosine are very much you know to do with india like just like algorithm you see it has much and earlier it had to do with algorithmi who was interested in indian ways of calculation okay no 24 volt division of the quadrant to find out the signs okay that i will not uh, you, you have come across this earlier also maybe i should uh, not go into details so you to find out the <coughs> sign at any particular for any angle you first find out the signs corresponding to multiples of 3 degree 45 minutes or 3 and 3 quarter uh, degree which is 90 by 24 okay so you find that out and then sign tables and all that much has been said about it but i just briefly summarize for completeness so this is the difference equation second order difference equation for finding r sin alpha i i alpha okay the second order difference equation so this is what was used by aryabhata right even in the previous lecture you had this so i'm not going to detail so first sin alpha r sin alpha is r alpha is 225 it is given in aryabhatiya next is r sin 2 alpha is 449 see all those things i need not explain but a very crucial thing is that you know that this is a second order difference equation and uh, in the uh, it is essentially equivalent of the second order differential equation d squared by dx squared sin x is equal to minus sin x okay so this is a very and for that time you know at the time of you know this is in 499 it is a very important thing you know and remarkable you see there is one professor mumford who is a fields medalist okay very important equivalent to nobel prize in mathematics he had come to my chennai about 5 years back or so you know so he was really he there are some lectures on history of uh, uh, mathematics and he was also talking about it he was marveling at this you know fact that uh, 
or Rebota had something close to that kind of a you know advanced and this is the most optimal way of you know generating a chain table. So, that is what was emphasized by many people you see in. So, from this you know the second order difference equation you can generate the whole thing and the most uh, the cleverest way of doing things and that is very important. So, I will not go into details of that the exact second order finite difference equation is this. So, cos 1 minus alpha in the even the previous lecture you saw that. So, Aryabhata's values were slightly inaccurate. So, improved by Nilakanta. Okay. So, and the first sign you took as 224 minutes sorry this must be 50 seconds 224 minutes 50 seconds are 224 plus 50 by 60 and these are the better approximation sin alpha is equal to alpha minus alpha cube by factorial 3. Okay. And similarly, this was you know is 2 1 in 1 minus cos alpha this was you know approximately 1 over 233 and a half which is this. So, obviously, Nilakanta gets a much better sign table. So, you already listen to this uh, sign table no. So, this how it is done and please uh, remember again that you know the Indian sign. Okay. So, you have to divide essentially by 3438 to get the modern value of the sign. So, that is all. So, when they say sin it is r sin theta right. So, that is the ja and r is very close to 3438. So, that is what you have to remember. Okay. Now, how to get the, for an intermediate angle how do we handle the situation. Okay. So, this gives only the signs at regular intervals of 3 degree 45 minutes so that uh, yeah. So, for that you do the interpolation. So, r sin theta the first is the first order interpolation. Okay. So, suppose theta is there it is close to theta i let us say. So, then r as theta minus theta i into so the by the rule of proportionality. So, what is done here is you know suppose that is if theta i you are finding the r sin theta for theta i and theta i plus 1. So, this is the difference. Okay. So, for a difference corresponding to theta i plus 1 and theta i this is the actual difference between the signs. And what is the value what is the correction for an arbitrary difference theta minus theta i. So, by the rule of proportionality. So, if this is the change for this change in the angle what is the change of sign for this change in angle? So, that is this okay. by proportionality you get this. So, what I am trying to say is that you know suppose you have you want to find the find this r sign at 300 minutes. So, the first approximation is that r sign 300 minutes. So, close to that is r sign 275 minutes okay plus 300 minus 275 okay and r sign 450 450 or 550 right 275 sorry I am sorry 225 this must be 225 yeah. 450. 450 minus r sign 450 divided by 225. So, this is the and these are tabulated right 225 you know for 50 you know. So, these are tabulated values. So, you have to. So, for a difference of 225 this is the sign of the sign divided you know this is what you have to add for a difference of 300 minus 2 sorry 225 you have to add this by rule of proportionality. Suppose this assume that you know is a linearly varying in that interval which is not true. So, one should have a more clear you know better approximation to take into account the fact that sign is not move, you know varying so uniformly it is not a linear function okay to take that into account. So, the second order interpolation due to Brahma Gupta. So, he says in his uh, other famous work Khanda Kadyaka Gata Bhogya Khanda Kantara Dara Vikala Ghata Chetair Nava Navabihi Aptaya Tad Yuti Dalam Yutonam Bhogyad Unadikam Bhogyam. 
So, multiply the residual arc left after division by 900 by half the difference of the tabular difference passed over and that to be passed over and divide by 900. By the result increase or decrease as the case may be half the sum of the same two tabular difference. The result which less or greater than the which uh, should be difference to be passed is a true tabular difference to be passed over. This is the mechanical translation. So, what he is trying to say is the following. You see, first we will get what he is trying to say. And uh, actually, Brahmagupta in the Khandakadika it is a Karana work, you see. So, for fast calculations without going to too much of theory. So, in that the sign tables are you know a very rough values are given, you know, that is at the interval of 15 degrees. So, that is 900 minutes. That is why the 900 is coming. So, the 9, uh, that 90 degrees is divided into 6 portions. So, he is giving the values for the 6 these things. So, intermediate values how do you get? So, because these intervals are so large, so more uh, the better approximation for the intermediate values is needed. So, that is why he is uh, saying this. So, what he is saying is following. Okay. Suppose one is given, in fact he does not say sin or cosine and all that obviously, it is for sin and cosine from the context. Actually, it is valid for any function and any function. Suppose you are given some function at the interval of alpha, you see. So, alpha, 2 alpha, 3 alpha like that. Suppose you are given the values at i minus 1 stage is this f of i minus 1 alpha, then f of i alpha, then f of i plus 1 alpha. So, then what he is saying is that suppose beta is a fraction. So, f of i alpha plus beta alpha is f of i alpha plus beta alpha by alpha is in, into delta of i plus 1 plus delta i by 2 plus beta into delta of i plus 1 minus delta i by 2. That is what he is saying and what is delta i? That is the difference you see i alpha and i minus 1 alpha. So, that is the difference and this is the next difference you see. Khandajya you were we are talking about right the difference between the signs at successive this thing values of this multiples of. So, that is that. So, you are taking these and then you find out that is what he is saying. So, now compare with the Taylor series, the modern Taylor series. Of course, he does not talk about it. I am saying just to for comparison, if you take this, this is how you do your Taylor series in modern times. F of i alpha is you know, suppose you know the function at this value, then to find this, you have to know the derivatives of d f d f at various orders and first order this is this and second order you have to have this kind of a term. The second order in also it is called Newton Stirling formula second order this thing. And so, Brahmagupta is taking this essentially he is taking d f by d x as this. So, this is the change and this is the amount of change in the angle. So, this is the rate of change. So, he is taking the average of the rate of change at uh, 2 points i alpha and i plus 1 average rate of change at i plus 1 alpha and i alpha. And d squared f by d x is he is saying the difference difference between these you see these are rate of change at i plus 1 alpha these are rate of change in i alpha essentially it is related to the second derivative as we call it. So, it is very amazing that um, <coughs> He is discussing this in 650 AD or whatever, 6, you know, that is what it is, right. So, only you have to plug in properly. As I told you, I mean, what he says is this, but we can very clearly see, you know, that alpha is 900 minutes and uh, all the other things you see, half the difference of the tabular difference he is saying, all the things he is saying, and uh, positive and, triple and divide by 900, all less or greater than the tabular difference. So, all the ingredients are there and essentially he is giving this formula which we can understand like this. So, you can get more accurate values for the intermediate angle that is what I am trying to say. So, that is the second order interpolation formula for which Brahmagupta is justly famous. Then apart from tables one can do with um, I know the exact values for the 24 hour signs without um, so, Professor Ram Subramanian also was mentioning that. So, without doing the tables, one can find out the all the 24 hour signs using a geometrical method. Okay, that is what he was saying. 
See, for instance, if you inscribe a hexagon, you can see that r sin 30 degrees is equal to r by 2. Okay. So, this is a hexagon this side. So, this angle is 60, half angle is 30. So, this is r by 2. This is r by 2, this is r. So, sin 30 is r by 2 basically, sin 30 is r by 2. Similarly, sin 45 degrees is you know 1 by root 2, right. So, so that is also given in, these are explicitly stated in the works, various textbooks, books in Indian mathematics and astronomy. And so, you know sin 30, you know sin 45. And if you know sin theta, you can find out cos theta from this. In particular, in the 24 division, if you know the ith r sin, that is r sin, it should be i alpha. We also know 24 minus ith r sin, that is r sin 24 minus i alpha, as 24 alpha is 90 degrees. So, 24 minus i or 24 minus i alpha is r sin 90 minus i alpha, which is r cos i alpha, which is this. So, what I am trying to say is, for instance, suppose i is 2, okay, then r sin 22 alpha essentially square root of r squared minus this one. This one, right. So, r sin 22 alpha is square root of r squared minus r squared uh, sin squared 2 alpha. So, from 2 you can find out 22. So, like that. And it is realized that we can find r sin theta by 2 from r cos theta which can be found from r sin theta. So, in his Brahma's Buddha Siddhanta, Brahma Gupta says, Utkrama Samakhanda Guna Vyasat Athava Chaturtha Bhagadyam Krutva Ukta Khanda Kani Jardha Nayanam Nalagva Masmat. The square root of the fourth part of the verse sign of an arc multiplied by the diameter is the r sign of half the torque, that is what it means. So, r sin theta by 2 is essentially he is say giving this d by 4 into this, so it is square root of r by 2 into r into 1 minus cos theta. So, essentially he is saying to say the sin square theta by 2 is equal to half of 1 minus cos theta, this we know, right. So, this formula also was known. So, in fact, this is it has been noticed earlier by Varahamihira himself. Varahamihira who was just almost a contemporary of Aryabhata, slightly later, Aryabhatiya 499 uh, CE. And uh, Varamira's Pancha Siddhantika was around 520 or something like that. So, he there he describes five systems of astronomy and so on, Pancha, that is why Pancha Siddhantika, and uh, there he describes some trigonometry. So, that is what he says. Ishtamcha Jigunona Tribhajya Yona Trayasya Chapajya Shishtiguna Sa Karani Taya Dhruvona Avasheshasya. So, twice any desired arc is subtracted from 3 sines that is 90 degrees. The r sine of the remainder is subtracted from the r sine of 3 sines. The result multiplied by 60 is a square of r sine of the torque. Okay. So, that is the thing. See, I should mention that sometimes you know that capital R is not always taken to be 3, 4, 3, 8. Sometimes some other values also are taken for simplicity in calculation. So, Varaha Mehra is taking capital R to be 120. So, that is why he is saying 60 is coming, you know, in his verse, Shasti. So, that is R by 2. Uh, even Siddhanta Shuromani, Bhaskara will take a shorter sign table, you know. So, he will take because for faster computations, he will take a R is equal to 120 there also. So, like that. So, it is only a constant here. So, this is essentially, so this formula that you can find out, sorry, I am, I am wrong. Here it must be 1 minus cos theta, 2 theta, right? Twice any desired or 2 theta. This is not correct. It is cos 2 theta. So, essentially, so cos 2 theta is found from sin 2 theta. So, if you know sin 2 theta, you can find sin theta. Or if you know sin theta, you can find sin theta by 2. So, so essentially, so you know sin 30 you know sin 45, you know sin 90, sin theta by 2 from sin theta and you know how to get sin 90 minus theta from sin theta. So, using this one can construct it. So, with the knowledge of the h sin which is sin 30, deg 30 degrees is equal to half, 
the 12th sign which is sin 45 degrees is equal to 1 by root 2, i by 2th sin from i sin, 24 minus i sin from i sin, one can find out the whole you know. So, from 8 you can find out 16 h sin and from 8 you can get you know from the half sin theta by 2 formula you can get 4 and 20 from 4 you can get 2 I mean that uh, second sign 22nd sign from 2 you can get first sign and 23rd sign from 22 you can get 11 sign and 13 sign you see I mean this 13 means 22 uh, sorry 11 24 minus 11 right from 20 you can get 10 and 14 from 10 you can get 5 and 19 like that and from the 12th sign you can get this. So, you can see that everything is covered. So, all the 24 signs can be found using this method and there will be lots of square roots on the way. So, the method is exact but cumbersome. So, like you know finding the circumference inscribing polygons with larger and larger number of sites. One key, can keep on doing it can get a large very high accuracy, but it is very cumbersome after some time. You have to do lot of you know on the square root and square root of square root of square root like that. Now, <coughs> Bhaskara Jyotpati is, a, is, a, is called a, is a some uh, 30 verses or so or 28, I do not remember. So, that is at the end of this so called Gola Dhyaya of Siddhanta Shuromani. So, Siddhanta Shuromani and this spherical astronomy part in the at the end is Jyotpati he calls you know. So, it is interesting you know. So, what it means the generation of science ok. So, that is the Indian way of this thing. You get the numbers and of course, with all accuracy and with all following all the logic ok, but that is the important thing and you know on the theory you can you know learn that is a uh, do it later also. So, for instance, he gives a method for finding sin 18 degrees in this. So, 18 degrees can does not come in this sin 24, you see, he does not come. So, he gives a method. So, he says, Trija Kruti Shughatat Mulam Trijonitam Chiturta Bhaktam Ashtadasha Bhaganam Jiva Spashta Bhavat Devam. So, deduct the radius from the square root of the product of the square of radius and 5 and divide the remainder by 4, the quotient thus found will be give the exact R sin of 18 degrees. So, he is saying that R sin 18 degrees is equal to R into root 5 minus 1 by 4, because he does not give the in the vasana he will explain the method. So, essentially what he is um, uh, what one has to do is the following. So, the circle of radius r. So, here this A O B is 36 degrees, A O B is 36 degrees of course, it looks much larger than that for clarity they assume it is 36 ok. Then O A B is 72, this angle is 72, is 72 also 72 and let uh, this A D bisect this you know O B. So, you are taking this angle. So, uh, isosceles triangle ok, this is 36, this is 72, this is 72, this is radius ok and um, your angle O A D. So, this is 72 by 2, so this is 36, so this is 36, this is 108 and this is 72, this is 72. So, this is also an isosceles triangle A D is equal to A B and A D also equal to O D. Okay, it did not appear like that. I'm sorry, the figure is not to scale. So from these things, one can find out the sine 18. So for instance, OF bisects this angle AOB, and OF is perpendicular to AB. So AOF that is 18 degrees. So now let X is equal to R sine 18. So your AB is equal to 2AF, and AF is R sine 18. So, you call it as 2 x. So, one can see that one can show that A B D the triangle A B D and O A B they are similar one can show that because both of them 72 72 no, but A B D A B D. So, this is 72 this is 72 this is 36 similarly O A B 
this is 72, this is 72, this is 36. So, they are similar. So, you get A B by B D is equal to O A by A B. So, A B squared is equal to O A into B D. So, now B D is this is B D is O B minus O D. So, it is R minus 2 x and O A is R. So, essentially you get from this you know A B squared is equal to O A B D that translates into 2 x squared is equal to R into R minus 2 x. So, finally you get x is equal. So, this x sin 18 R, R sin 18. So, 4 x squared plus 2 R x minus R squared is equal to 0. So, this is a quadratic equation you get the solution. So, you will get root 5 minus 1 by 4. So, R sin 18 is equal to R into root 5 minus 1 by 4. So, this is a angle which we have discussed in detail. Similarly, in another verse, he gives the R sin 36. So, Tijja Kruti Shughatat, Tijja Kruti Varga Pancha Ghatasya, Moolonat Ashta Krutat Moolam, Shet Trimsha Damsha Jya. Deduct the square root of 5 times the fourth power of the radius from 5 times the square of radius and divide the remainder by 8. The square root of the quotient will be the R sin of 36 degrees. So, using similar methods one can do. In fact, this is R sin 36, he is giving this, this is the thing, 5 root of 5 and then inside the root there is another root. So, sin 36 he is giving as you take first find 5 minus root 5 by 8 and take the square root of that. So, this can be understood as follows because sin 36 is equal to square root of half of 1 minus cos 72 okay. and cos 72 is sin 18 and sin 18 you have found right square root of half this thing 1 minus root 5 minus 1 this thing. So, finally you get this. So, this is the. So, this is how he has uh, of course, he has discussed more uh, things in uh, Jodhpati. So, we will come to that uh, later for instance he will tell how to find out you know you found 24 R signs then he will tell how to find out 30 R signs that is you know if you divide 90 into 30 divisions then how to find that is find the sign at the interval of 3 degrees or sign of 1.5 degrees and then he will go to sign of 1 degree you know sign 1, sign 2, sign 3 etcetera how to find. So, those things also he will do in Jyotpati so which he will do in the next lecture. In fact, he will say some very important things, uh, important results of uh, related to sin and cosine in the Jodhpati. So, the famous you know you all of know, know that sin A plus B is sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. So, those, those things he will discuss in that. So, next our lecture will start with this uh, more things on Jodhpati. So, the references are given here. Thank you.